So, it's a domino. It's a piece. <clears throat> There's a team that's uh, having troubles right now. And the troubles haven't started on the ice yet. But, I think they're going to. And they're trying to head that off by making a trade or two here. So the Pittsburgh Penguins today uh, pick up Ron Hainsey from Carolina. He was one of the top 40 tradable guys. Uh, and they give up a second rounder and Danny Cristo. And Carolina retains half the cap money. This is going to happen a lot. I said last night, a lot of these teams that are contenders are up against the cap. So getting guys to fit in underneath is tricky. Teams are going to have to retain cap. Um, it is it is a smart move. Uh, I like Hainsey. I don't know that he's ever going to be the point scorer he was a few years ago. But I like Hainsey. And I like the fit for the Penguins. Uh, he'll be asked to play more of a defensive role than what he, he played at one point in his career. Wow, that's really sweet. Sorry, I just I got a flavor I've never had before. That's uh, that's really really sweet. Uh, wow, and low calorie too. I don't know how. Oh God, don't be sucralose, please for the love of God, don't be sucralose. Ugh. All right. Everybody hates aspartame, but all I know is sucralose makes me sick. All right. Um. Anyways, the uh, the Penguins right now are in trouble. So you've got Latang's day to day, Justin Schultz's day to day, Daly's out now for a while, and Mod is out for a while. So bringing in Hainsey is is a start. Basically, you're just trying to stop the bleeding if you're the Pittsburgh Penguins right now. The good news if you're a Penguins fan is Jim Rutherford is you know a, a, a proven GM. He is absolutely a proven GM. And I really believe the Penguins will emerge on the other side of this stronger. The one thing that it does for you is players getting injured at this time of the year is as long as they return to action about a week before the playoffs, they can enter the playoffs well-rested. Depends on the injury, depends on what rehab is involved. But if it's an injury where they can kind of take it easy and just chill out, um, they can be really, really uh, well-rested for the playoffs. And they can go on a nice long run. So, it's good news, bad news. The, the good news is, uh, none of these guys are being uh, listed as out for the season. The bad news is, they've got a lot of games coming up. And they're going to be relying on a lot of, uh, a lot of help from other players. You know, these guys are going to be, asking, you know, going to be getting asked for some, some key help. Uh, Latang, if Latang is more than day-to-day... -day, that's massive for Pittsburgh. Latang really makes that blue line go. I personally am torn on Latang. I love his game. I love his intensity. I love uh, the way he plays with the puck. I just don't like some of his hits. Uh, I remember during last year's playoffs, you could feel bad for him get, for getting a dirty hit, and then he turn around and deliver one right back, and you go, "So, two wrongs make a right, or what?" It, it's uh, it's tricky with Latang because he is a very polarizing figure. You either think he's a hero or you think he's kind of a dirty player. I'm saying kind of because I'm being nice about it. I'm sure there's Flyers fans who right now are going to be uh, typing away about how dirty Latang is, but the fact is, he is one of the better defensemen in the NHL. This this kind of seems seems to me like we're we're at a, a point now where defensemen are kind of fantastic. We went through a renaissance for goaltenders in the, the late 90s, mid to late 90s, uh, where it seemed like there was a lot of really good goaltenders, a lot of good French goaltenders at that point too. And now it it feels to me anyways, like we are in an era where there's a lot of really fantastic defensemen. Like a lot. If you're top four in the NHL right now, you have to be special or on a bad team. But you know, if if you're top four and and you're one of the top tens in the league and and you've got you're in that top four, you're a pretty damn good defenseman. And there's not much to choose between numbers one and sixteen in terms of the playoff teams and their blue lines. Oh, Sucralos, please be nice to me. 
because I'll be damned if that isn't a really, really fantastic tasting drink. It's peace tea, razzleberry. So I shouldn't be surprised that it is uh, tasting like sugar since it's razzleberry uh, peace tea. No artificial flavors, no preservatives, no artificial colors. And it's got the, the capital from Washington and it says, don't tread on me and we are in this together. I mean, this, this is as American as you get. That's why I grab it. I see this stuff when we go down to the States to get gas or whatever, and I'm like, oh, I got to have that. That's American. Oh, it is tasty. I'm going to be regretting this later. But anyways, uh, in terms of the trade, I think Pittsburgh's going to make more moves. I think, now, what McLean is saying here on uh, Hockey Central is he figures another blue liner. I think... They'll get another blue liner, and I think because of injuries to guys like Rust and Sherry, I think they're going to get another depth forward. It's a crying shame that they can't afford Yannick Hansen. Because Yannick Hansen would fit in really well on the Penguins. He can play. He can play either wing. He's relatively fast. And he's got deceptively good hands. He would fit in really well. And, yeah... So there's, there's my, hey, trade Yannick here. Uh, Yannick, if you're watching, put, put, put Pittsburgh on your trade list. Uh, and it's funny because uh, I was actually going to do a video today on the trade candidates as listed by the Hockey News because they get into best fits and non-best fits. And then this trade, uh, I'm seeing a report of it, so I figured, well, just discuss the trade first and Hainsey and the fact you like Hainsey. And you like what Carolina's doing here, too, because they get a second-round draft pick. That's pretty good. This is why, you know, when people said, oh, you're not going to get a first for, for this player or that player. I think draft picks are going to get traded a lot this year because it's it's perceived as being a weak draft. Uh, during a weak draft year, first rounds are going to get traded like crazy. I look back to 99 and 2000 as good examples of that. Were trade tra Draft picks? Sure. How many do you want? You can have all of them. As long as it's the race piece coming back, team doesn't care. They're like, yeah, you can go ahead and have our draft picks. So th that's going to be happening a lot this year. All right, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, best of luck to Ron Hainsey, and uh, I will talk to you all again soon. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe as well.